Today, the European Parliament, the Council of the European Union and the European Commission launched what they call a conference on the future of Europe. And I'm, we are very glad and honored that Vice President of the European Commission, Mrs. Suwicza, is the Commissioner for Democracy and Demography, so she is the ideal person to talk about this initiative. So, um, Madam Vice President, could you please explain us what uh, what the Conference of the Future on the Future of Europe is, and what you are, what the goals of this initiative are? Okay. First of all, thank you for your question and for your interest. Uh, I agree. The best way is the way forward. This is also the spirit of the Conference on the Future of Europe: learn from the past and shape the future. Today, Robert Schuman's vision of the future has an impact on our daily lives, but today it is not politicians alone who are shaping the future. Through the Conference on the Future of Europe, we bring citizens into the heart of policy making uh, in the European Union. So this conference opens a new path towards a genuine engagement with our citizens. It is a public space for them to voice their concerns, their ideas, their hopes or their dreams. So inclusion, transparency, diversity, uh, these three are our light motives in this endeavor. So this means that we want to reach citizens in all corners of the European Union, from the mountains to the islands. Through the Conference on the Future of Europe, citizens everywhere I have started deliberating and engaging with each other and policymakers to shape the future uh, of European Union, uh, the future they want. But we are not uh, looking to hear that we are doing a great job and everything is working perfectly. If this were the case, then we would not need the conference. We are trying to reach those who do not usually engage with us. And I want to hear from those who are critical or who are skeptical of the European project. In simple words, we want to actively engage with everyone of all ages, all levels of society, and I also want children's voices to be heard. So, part of the conference added value resides in the fact that European Parliament, Council and Commission have committed to following up on citizens' proposals going beyond a mere listening exercise. We are aware of the fact that we need to rebuild trust and close the gap between the institutions and citizens. People's attitudes and expectations have shifted. So, I'm sure the citizens are eager to have a greater say in democracy beyond elections. So, it is clear that, polit it is clear that uh, politics can no longer be business as usual. The conference is our answer to that call. So democracy itself is not static and it constantly evolves. And us politicians and decision makers must evolve along with it. We must make our democracy fit for the future. If we don't engage with citizens, we potentially create a vacuum. So politics does not like a vacuum and usually fills them with extreme narratives which erodes trust further. This is the only way for a stronger, more resilient, fairer and equal Europe, where everyone's rights and needs are respected and, what is very important, no one is or no one feels left behind. Conference on the Future of Europe is a completely new way uh, to open the dialogue, on, so with a lot of online tools, etc. But uh, we're living in times that debates tend to be very polarized. And um, uh, how do you prevent that the platform should, you, that you use is being misused by people who, yeah, who are not really interested in, in the constructive dialogue? Uh, may I first explain quickly what the platform is about? 19, 19 April marked the concrete kickoff of the conference activities with, uh, uh, with a dedicated multilingual platform available in 24 official European languages. So the launch of the platform was a key milestone because the conference uh, objective is to empower citizens and civil society to shape European policies and this platform enables citizens to do just that. Through the platform, citizens and all other stakeholders 
can forward their proposals, comment on other people's proposals, organize uh, events, either virtual or, when possible, in person or hybrid. All contributions from local events, European citizens panels and conference plenaries are shared on this platform. To support the deliberations, you will also find nine, key, nine boxes, nine key topics for debate and deliberation. And these range from climate change to social justice to jobs. But the list of uh, these uh, topics is not exhaustive. We have created a, an open box for citizens who want to engage on other topics of their interest. I am very curious to find out what ideas citizens will come up with. Uh, I cannot comment on the discussions or ideas on the digital platform as that could potentially influence the deliberations there. So this is important. I have been saying this since the beginning that we cannot preempt or we cannot influence the outcome of these deliberations. This is also the advice of experts. <laughs> I genuinely want to hear what citizens have to say. Initial figures show that there is a lot of activity on the platform, so people are engaging <laughs> with the conference and it is, it is uh, very popular. Okay. You're, the, in fact, the only commissioner in this commission that has a background as a mayor of Dubrovnik. Does that experience help you in this work? Is this grassroots work with, uh, with the <laughs> conference? I have been an elected representative at local, national and European level, so I have learned through all that time that citizens' trust in democracy cannot and should not ever be taken for granted. It needs to be earned. So my time as mayor of Dubrovnik taught me an important lesson. Uh, all politics is local. The grassroots are important and we must take care of them. Take the recent example of the pandemic. It was local and regional governments on the front line tackling COVID-19 every day. And uh, I do personally appreciate the intense efforts of each and every mayor, each regional and local councillor, governor, president, because through their networks and their links with the local people, they make a difference to the lives of people. Local and regional authorities are, I believe, key to making a success of this conference too. Uh, I do not have a constituency anymore in my role as European Vice President and member of college, but I have a very fond memories of my time as Mayor of Dubrovnik. During that time, one of my, my uh, most precious achievements happened when I established the first Children's Council there. This was the catalyst for kicking off a tradition of child participation in the city's decision-making. So you can see that both children and citizens' engagement are very close <laughs> to my heart. And I can say this also as a former mayor, but also as a grandmother. Uh, <laughs> what will Parliament and the Council and the Commission eventually will do with the conference? And, and how will you compile the, this, the input of all these, I hope, millions of people in, into a clear set of proposals that can be useful for politics as well, because it's one thing to listen to people, but not everything people say is immediately to be translated, can be immediately translated into policy. And how will, uh, will you uh, go forward with that? Uh, citizens can get involved through what we call three Ps, the multilingual digital platform, European citizen panels, and the conference plenaries. So let me stress that anyone anywhere can organize citizens' panels or other events under the umbrella of the conference, provided they respect the principles of the Charter. So the deliberations on the platform will provide the basis for deliberations in the European citizens' panels. All platform activities will be regularly analyzed and reports will be prepared to feed into the European citizens' panels and the conference plenaries. There will be four European citizens panels. Each panel will comprise 200 citizens and will ensure that at least one female and one male citizens per member state is included. Citizens will be chosen randomly for the panels. They will be representative of European Union's diversity in terms of geographic, gender, age, socioeconomic background, and also level of education. Young people will make one third of each panel. We will also ensure to have people from urban and rural areas 
I cannot say more on the plenaries at the moment since uh, we are still discussing this in the executive board with my two co-chairs from the European Parliament and Portuguese Council Presidency. So, uh, what I can say, I'm eager to see how citizens can inspire us in our work. I want to be very clear on this point. When the conference draws its conclusion next year, in the spring of 2022, the work does not stop, at least not for us. That will be the moment for the three institutions to reflect on uh, what the citizens have deliberated and decide how we can best follow up on it. And uh, if I may say, President von der Leyen has committed to do this and I intend to make it happen. Okay. Um, the European dream that was forced by, among others, Robert Schuman in 1950 is being questioned from many sides. We shouldn't... Uh, deny that. Citizens sometimes think their voice is not heard by politicians. There are a few member states who sometimes don't accept the consensus within the Council. And we have had the Brexit, one of the member states left the European Union. So how do you believe that Europe can restore faith in the European project? And do you think that, that this conference is one is a tool for that? Or is it a much more on the long term you have to think? <laughs> I genuinely believe that we can restore faith, but it will not be an easy task. We know that many citizens are hurting and are disappointed. Many citizens have suffered great losses, personally and professionally, as we slowly emerge from this COVID-19 pandemic. So the need to reconcile, reconcile our citizens with the European dream has never been more pressing than it is uh, at the moment. But this also means that we are... Uh, that we, at the institutional level, need to be courageous and not shy away from difficult discussions. We need to listen and speak to those who feel left alone by the European project, who do not believe in our project or who do not trust it. But I do not think it is all doom and gloom. The European Union has made some real and tangible differences in people's lives. For example, look at free movement, look at Erasmus, look at uh, initiative Rome like at home. So the procurement of vaccines is another success story of the European Union with one of the production sites right here in Belgium. This is benefiting people across Europe. These really speak to citizens, but we need to work on the space where the European Union can make a tangible connection with people, be more responsive to their needs. Uh, I, we, all of us know that the world has changed dramatically since 1950, so did Europe. Dreams change and evolve, and many might differ from those over 70 years ago. But uh, uh, at the moment, we want to build a new European dream together with our citizens. And, for example, you know that my home country, for example, Croatia, has experienced war as recently as the uh, 1990s. Uh, this is not too long ago, and I, I know all too well that democracy and peace can never be taken for granted. We need to constantly work on them as they evolve. So this dream for stability, equality, for peace drives me in my daily work. I firmly believe that the European Union can help us realize this dream, and in this sense, Robert Schuman's vision to ensure that Europe remains vital to the preservation of peace, and this is very much alive today. For this reason alone, we need to restore faith in the European project. In my view, there is no alternative. Maybe a last question. Can we consider the conference as a one-shot <laughs> initiative or will it in the, in the, can we dream that it will have its place among the other institutions like Parliament, the Council and the Commission or is that too ambitious? Hmm. This is a very interesting question, and again, I do not want to preempt the discussions of what citizens want for the future, because if the conference is not to be an one shot, then I would say it is the citizens who can make them that uh, who can make that uh, clear to all of us. So I would say that your questions deserve serious consideration. The conference opens a new space for debate with citizens to address Europe's challenges and priorities and will run until the spring next year. However, this conference is only the beginning of a new way of making policy, politics in Europe. Uh, 
I see this as part of a new process of citizens' engagement of deliberative democracy, which has the potential to strengthen all our representative democracies in the European Union. So this innovative process is conceived for citizens and depends on them. Elected representatives have their chambers in which to deliberate the future of Europe. Ministers have their councils of governments. I have my seat on the College of Commissioners. The citizens will have this conference, which is a space provided for them to deliberate among themselves and with their elected, uh, elected representatives on an equal footing. This is what we want to achieve. So make citizens part of this uh, deliberative process, but also part of uh, draft uh, making uh, drafting uh, European policies. We want them to fill this. Madam President, I would like to thank you very much for your contribution and I wish you uh, a lot of success with the conference. Thank you for having me and all the best.